Playing through Total War Warhammer 3 is a lot of fun, but after you've done it a first time, and then a second time, and maybe even a third time, you start to get a little bored of the Chaos Realms Rift mechanic. So in this video today, I'm going to step you through a um, suggestion, not a suggestion, a um, community kind of workaround to shut off or at least edit the way the rifts work. Now this was put onto the subreddit subreddit by user uh, Azerty Keys, and I'm gonna go ahead and link this in the description, the pin comment, everything like that, so you can go directly to the Reddit page, as well as the GitHub um, website that I pull this actual uh, program source code or thing off of and we're going to go through how to pretty much set it up and go through it. Um, it it will feel a little scary at first but I promise it's actually pretty easy to get going. A lot of people that are maybe not so tech savvy haven't really jumped into this but I've wanted to so this is kind of my instructional step-by-step uh, -step guide on how to shut off the Chaos Realms in Total War Warhammer 3. So let's get started here. I'm just going to be using a display capture. You'll see my desktop and we'll kind of work through this together and I'll show you how to shut off or at least just kind of how to edit things. So jumping back to the desktop here, we're going to start off with the GitHub file for RPFM. And again, I'll provide all the links and everything in the description, in the pinned comment, all that action. But you're going to go ahead and select this little guy right here and it's going to download the zip, the compressed folder, file, whatever it is, um, to get you going. So I've already done that, so I'm going to go ahead and just minimize this, and we're going to bring up um, my D drive before we get started. So the first thing that we're going to do before we even actually get into manipulating these files is backing them up. So let's go into a Steam folder, then we're going to go into Steam apps right here, and into Steam apps we're going to go into Common, not the musical artist, and then we're going to go to Total War Warhammer 3. Yes, I do play Fallout 76, despite the fact that everyone hates it. Then go into data, and then now you've got your pack files. And these files are basically what the game uses to play the game. It's got all the audio, all the data, all the actual variants of the campaign, everything of the sort. So the big one we want to take a look at, though, is data.pack. Go ahead and select that. Control C or uh, yeah, Control C, and I would just say make a new folder on your desktop, and we'll call it Warhammer Three. Oops, sorry. We'll we'll call it Warhammer Three Backup. And I can't spell. And just go ahead and save it to there. And this way, at least, you've got the file in case anything goes wrong you screw up manipulating it whatever the case is you can just simply bring this back into this folder and it will kind of counter or it'll overwrite anything you've done now another thing you can do if something like this if you like i'm just not i'm not i'm having a problem just simply delete this file and then verify your files on steam this will go ahead and put re-download the file for you because it'll take a look at all the ones you have it'll say hey this one's this one's missing so it'll redo it so that's just how you back everything up before we even get started so that's kind of your first step right there so we'll go ahead now and go to downloads add all my cat porn and we'll open up the uh, zip drive here the uh, the zip file open it up and we have all of the files that correspond to the program we're going to be using. And you can run it directly through here, but it probably won't work properly. So we're going to extract them. To do that, again, we're just going to make a new folder right on our desktop, Warhammer 3 campaign. We'll call it that. I'm going to open it up, Control A to select all these files, and then just drag them into the new folder. And there you go. And I apologize if you are tech savvy and you're like, I know how to do this guy. I'm just trying to make it as easy for anyone who just has no idea. So we're going to go ahead now and close the uh, compressed file, the uh, this one over here in our download section. And going to go look now at the one we have extracted into Warhammer 3 campaign. Scroll all the way down until we find RPFM. Double click that. And you'll probably get this. Windows has protected your PC because it thinks it possibly is malicious malware, a virus, whatever it is. Who knows? It probably is. And I probably have a virus now, but it, I promise it's not. So press run anyway. And then you'll get this pop up right here. So you have a rusted pack file manager and it'll say, hey, no local schemas found. Do you want to download the latest? Go ahead and press update. And it will go ahead and update those files for you. So once it updates everything, basically what we're going to do is navigate towards the um, 
uh, the that data dot pack file that we saw earlier, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and press close. We're gonna go up here to pack file, then open a pack file. And just like I said before, we now have to go back to D. My, mine's D. It might be on C drive for you. Steam. I'm sorry, Steam apps there. Into common, into Total War Warhammer 3, into data, and then here we have all of our pack files. We're going down, remember to data.pack, not data underscore one, but data.pack. We'll go ahead and press open. And let that take its time here. And now we maximize this here. So now that we've grabbed that data.pack file, we have to edit it. So go up here back to pack file once more, go to preferences or just press control P. And you've got all these settings here. Just press the settings tab right here. You've got all this scary stuff. Don't even worry about it. All we have to do is click this checkbox here for allow editing of CA pack files. Go ahead and press save. And that now enables us to have access to um, uh, the pack file. So what we're going to do is we've got this right here. We're going to go down to script. That's this one right there below projectiles. You know how alphabetical order works. There we go. And in script, we're going to go to campaign. Press that down arrow. And in campaign, we're going to go to Warhammer 3 main chaos. Click that down arrow one more time. We still got more to go. We're going to click realms, down arrow one more time. And what we're going to select here, I'm going to make this a little bit larger for you. We're going to select realm common dot Lua. And from here, we're going to do some modifying. So if you've never used a compiler, the way that this works is you've got all of your numbers on the left that correspond to a respective line of code. So we're going to jump all the way down to line 95. And that's going to be the, or sorry, 94. That's the start of where we can do a lot of fun editing because this is a lot of the big data that people like manipulated because this first one here says the army strength required for the AI to win a realm once it reaches a survival battle location. If they do not meet the value, the army is destroyed. To simulate losing the survival battle so right now the default is 2 million you can double that put it up to 4 million so that the ai is now uh it's less likely to win the actual survival battle at the end so if you said hey everything about the chaos realms is just fine i just find that the ai gets the survival battle win way too fast then that's how you would change that right there the next one here is number of turns the rifts should stay on the map when first appearing. So right now it says 15 and you can add that up. You can put 25 or you can put it to, to five turns. So they are only there for a little bit of time. The next one too, the number of turns the rifts cannot open after they close. So basically what happens is the game will do a random number generator and it will say, oh, okay, this beats whatever the value is and then it causes more rifts to open up it'll say okay hey another urson's roar has begun and this is basically creating a cooldown timer between that so rifts cannot open again for 10 turns after um one set of rifts has happened if you don't if you want to kind of increase that interval to make it so that you've got longer periods of time in between rifts opening you would manipulate that right there as well so right now the default is 10 you put that maybe to 20 or 30. uh one thing that oh well, actually we'll get to that later because that's when the overall rifts happen the last line here before we jump to the, the i guess the one that everyone probably wants is the number of turns before chaos spawns out of a rift so by default after two turns when a rift is open a hero will spawn and then five turns after the rift is open a army will spawn so you can edit that and say oh, well you know what i want the heroes to come at turn 10 and i want the armies to come at turn 15 after the rift opens so right when they close an army comes out so you can manipulate that through these values right here that's on line 103 4 5. so these are the big ones like i said lines 94 to 105 are how you would manipulate the actual chaos rifts inner workings and mechanics but let's jump down to line 180 because that gives you the ability to shut it off if you want so so um, right now, this one's kind of a little funky here. It's part of a, a much larger function, but basically are rifts any open, true or false, and CM turn number equals 30 or get saved value Urson's Roar available. So you can, at that point, you can change this number of 30 to something else that allows you maybe to stabilize a little bit more. If you wanted to say, put 
turn 60 in here. You won't get an Urson's Roar until turn 60. Or you type in 600 and you won't get an Urson's Roar until turn 600, which would effectively shut it off. So basically you have the ability now to cater this Chaos Realms mechanic to this play style that you want to do. Are you okay with the mechanic and you really just want to have a little bit more time? Okay, well, we just turned it to turn 50 and we're good to go. We can now stabilize our campaign, wait until we're at a solid point, and then start to deal with the rifts themselves. Or do you want to actually manipulate the rifts so that they don't last as long or make it so that they, I'm sorry, I went way too far up. Uh, they don't last as long or that you've got less armies to deal with. Well, that's all going to be right here. Or maybe you want that AI to take longer. You'd manipulate that number right there. So I know this can seem kind of scary, but don't worry about it. You're not going to break your saves because worst comes to worst. You're just simply going to restore the data dot pack file if you want to undo any of this and it is worth noting if ca releases a patch it will break this because it will it will replace that file so if there's a patch that comes out you would need to manually go through this process again until ca releases an official way to shut off or manipulate the chaos realms or we get the steam's workshop which will allow the mod author to push out an update to us that would do this kind of um manually editing stuff for us automatically i guess that's what i'm trying to say but like i said don't worry about it you've got the data.pack file you can restore and if worst comes to worst you use verify it files and at the absolute possible worst you just simply re-download the game when you do boot the game up you will notice that it will say like a little exclamation point saying hey this has been manipulated just ignore that it's not a big deal um, you can just go ahead and play just make sure before you exit this screen you just press save pack file right there control s just like you would like if you were in word or something like that even if i go to leave right now it'll say like hey you know you sure that you want to leave right now you haven't saved so just make sure you save and you're going to be all set and good to go so hopefully this will help you out when you're playing through the chaos realms you can manipulate whether you want to play them a little more loose or a little more tight or you just want to get rid of them all together and if you have any questions you run into any issues go ahead and let me know in the comment section below more than happy to help you guys out and again a huge shout out to Azerty Keys, the gentleman who actually posted this on the uh, subreddit, and another big shout out here to Astalders, who's uh, a step by step is actually the the whole premise for this video here. So he kind of stepped me through it by by making this post. And I've gone ahead and uh, made a, a video here to make it a little bit easier for you, bros. But as always, thank you so much for watching here today. Go ahead and let me know. Like I said, if you have any questions, more than happy to help out. But have a good one and take care.